Keepers. My name is Donna Slayton, and I'm the principal at Keeper Crossing Middle School. And welcome to Evolving Educators. Hey, Chris, how's it going? It's going great. I'm so glad to be here to film another episode with you today. Yes, I can't wait to tell you about our amazing guest. Who is it? So our amazing guest is at a STEM, nationally STEM certified campus. Okay. Uh, you know where I'm going with this. I do. Um, has seven nationally certified STEM teachers. Okay. Yeah. Is really passionate about this topic. He sure is. We're talking about Roger Carlisle. We are the head koala in charge. Yes, he is at, <laughs> Kings Manor, at Kings Manor Elementary. He's the principal and he is very excited about to share um, his topic and his journey of STEM education and bringing it to Kings Manor Elementary. I'm really excited to hear about the whole journey because I've been a part of the process just videoing some of his his cool projects that the kids are I've doing. I've seen those. But to hear how it all started is gonna be really impactful today. And don't you think it's really gonna be an impact on our new leaders when they see such passion right. coming from him. Absolutely. And so he feels very strongly about this, mm -hmm. this topic and the process and he has devoted himself uh, to, to bringing this to Kings Manor. So I'm really excited to talk with him. I am too. When we come back from the break, we're going to be joined by Principal Rodri Carla. Great news. Hey, Chris, we are here with Rodri Carlisle. He is the principal at Kings Manor Elementary. Go Koalas. Yeah, uh, thanks Mr. for having me today. Mr. Carlisle, we're so glad you're here. And so this topic um, is really catching wind with um, the district and with Mr. Carlisle's uh, elementary school, and we can't wait to dive into this. Chris, today we're going to talk about STEM and STEM campus and all the things that means, you know, for Kings Manor. So I know this is a topic near and dear to your heart, Mr. Carlisle. Yes, it has been a very fun project uh, since the beginning, and we're going into full implementation mode, and so we're super excited about that's, it. That's that's nice. wonderful. So, talk to me, Rodri, about how did you land on STEM and a STEM campus for Kings Kings Manor? Of course. So when we got to Kings Manor, I was hired. Um, I guess we're going to my third year, and so we knew that we wanted something special for Kings Manor, and, and um, they'd done some great things prior to me getting there, and we wanted to figure out what those next steps were. And so we started really uh, diving into their data and looking at things, and we decided that um, a comprehensive STEM education program focusing on the engineering design process would probably be the the best set to uh, best thing to set them apart to really focus on the um, on the critical thinking skills. Sure, no, that's amazing. And I know one of the things we had talked about in the past is that Kings Manor, because of their diversity and just they didn't really land on students in one particular uh, place that they could have like a dual language program. So then it was more of searching for what's next for Kings Manor. Exactly, yes. We have we have over 23 languages represented, so it's a very diversified campus and it's super exciting. But we did want them to have their, their special um, something. And so when we really started diving in there, that's where we came up with um, a, a comprehensive STEM education program. That's awesome. So let's just talk a little bit about the steps that it took to get you to that place. Um, I know we talked about data, like, I mean, what kind of things did you look at that ultimately made you go uh, lean towards a STEM campus? Absolutely. So, of course, you know, anytime you go into a new um, campus or a new position, you always want to kind of look at where they're at to try to see where you can go from there. And so um, part of my um, my 90 day traction plan was really getting in there and looking at data and looking at, you know, um, their performance data on, you know, their um, their benchmark assessments and their um, and their star data as far as that goes, and then really try to fine tune and meet them where they're at and see where we could go from there. Absolutely. So oh, that sounds great. So when I'm, I'm a data person, I mean, we like looking at trends. I know Chris, you know, with his social media. <laughs> math teacher. Yes. Yep. Uh, yes. And we're both math teachers. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So one of the things was it one, I mean, it's STEM. So were you looking at math or like what types of data did you look at? Um, that helped you really hone in on on what to what your next steps would absolutely be. so um, <clears throat> with, with my background of course you know I've always been fond of science as well and so really when we looked at our science data um, I looked at where we were performing 
and knowing that the teaks were going to be changing in 2024, 2025. Mm-hmm. And I, I really had that lens on to kind of see like, where could we, where could we pivot from here to try to make it even better? Good. Mm-hmm. So what does STEM in a STEM curriculum, what does it do for students? Yeah, so STEM focuses, of course, on um, science, technology, engineering, and math. Um, it really, um, the fundamental aspect of it is how it is so cross-curricular. And so we were really trying to look at ways to look at how we could focus on improving depth of knowledge and their mm-hmm. critical thinking skills mm-hmm. specifically. Sure. And um, of course, it all started with science, but we we dove into all the data, right? And so then we went from looking at science data well, because I mean, data. critical thinking crosses every content, every content, right? Absolutely. Yes. And so is there a specific process you follow or is there a framework for for STEM that you follow? So really, it really came down to year one, which was our exploratory year. We put together a committee that was made up of individuals from the district, campus um, committee members. We also had um, some community stakeholders that were part of that uh, as well. And we really wanted to identify what STEM was to our campus. Um, Oh, that um, makes it really unique. mm -hmm. Absolutely. 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 And so that was really kind of how it all started. And so we looked at data. We knew that um, STEM and focusing on critical thinking skills was something we wanted to hone in on but then it was like okay so we have a we have a idea but what does it mean to us Mm -hmm. and is it what's best for us absolutely that yes that that what i really hear you saying i love the fact that you're talking about i mean stem is a universal word that everyone knows it's science technology you know engineering math however i love that you were able to craft it to fit what king's manor needs absolutely i think that I think that one uh, really intricate part about STEM, and and it's misconstrued often, Mm -hmm. is the fact that STEM is thought of as this um, global idea of what type of fun project can we build or make Mm -hmm. and call it STEM. And when I look at how valuable instructional time is, because as as campus Mm -hmm. leaders and anyone aspiring to be a campus leader needs to really understand that we only have so many minutes in the day. I wanted to really look at and and get the committee perspective on what is it that we're trying to achieve and really backwards design just like you do those lesson plans. So just good old-fashioned curriculum design, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah, that's good. So it wasn't really anything new, was it? You just needed to hone in on that thinking process and making that, putting that in the forefront, really. So what is the this thinking process. So when we talk about the engineering design process, what I what I really liked about it and what we really collectively, and by the way, we toured, um, we toured campuses um, from other districts and we also spoke to several different people. We went to different conferences to try to figure out, this is before we ever decided this, what we were doing, just to see what exactly is it that we're trying to build. And, and um, can you re-ask your question one more time? Oh, no, I okay. was just wondering how, um, how, how did you land on the engineering design process? Correct. Okay, so we um, we really collectively talked about it as a committee that we wanted something that could be a universal model that would mm-hmm. go cross curricular, mm-hmm. because so oftentimes we don't we don't cross over, mm-hmm. and we noticed that um, at King's Manor that um, as our as our population continues to um, to change that we have. Um, children that don't necessarily have the background knowledge and so so someone in our in our committee had mentioned like um i can't remember who it was but anyways they mentioned you know the thing is when we look at our students at king's manor we have some students who who can relate what they're learning to their background knowledge and other students who they find things unrelatable so we really wanted to look at how could we um relate things so is this something that um you know, is like a fourth and fifth grade thing. You know, you mentioned that fifth grade's tested. So is this something like STEM things for fifth graders? Is this a campus-wide thing? How, how is it kind of implemented at King's Manor? Absolutely, so as as the committee, again, we were talking about that and we talked about vertical alignment and um, we had different representation from different grade levels. And um, it was very unique hearing what fifth grade teachers felt like we struggled with and then what transpired down to fourth grade, third Mm -hmm. grade, and so on. So we really ended up deciding that we needed a collective, comprehensive process. We needed some sort of model that we could follow that every single person in our school could be a STEM teacher and that ultimately we could find a way to cross-curricular tie it Mm -hmm. to give those um, students that, um, that 
um, previous experience to kind of learn from. Sure. Let's talk about, you mentioned that you went, you spoke to others. Um, talk to me a little bit about that process. What, how was that valuable for you when you're crafting something for King's Manor? Absolutely. So, so we knew that we, um, we wanted many people coming to the table to try to figure out, you know, the direction we wanted to go. And so in, I was also new to the campus, and so I felt like I really needed to learn about what the culture was specifically at King's Manor and what they really um, felt like was visionary for them. So we incorporated people from um, all the way up to the high school level as far as to really try to hone in on on what would they like to see when they open their doors and they welcome um, you know students here, let's say to West Fork High School or whatever sure. high school that may be. What are they looking for? What skill set are they looking for? And we talked to the middle schools as well. Mm-hmm. Um, we even brought in some CTE teachers from the high school that were on the on the committee. And what was really neat about that is that committee that was made up of people from all over the district, as well as um, some community stakeholders, we went on campus tours of outside of the district. And so how was that helpful? So it was, what was neat about that was, is it was getting to see um, different ideas and, and philosophies put in place. Mm-hmm. Because that, you went to multiple places? We did. Oh, uh-huh. excellent. And so we were able to see like what their end result was. And cool. we found two different, two different ways that STEM was conducted. So one is ran through a specials rotation, which is a great fun experience for kids, but it doesn't necessarily give the, give the depth of knowledge or build on the critical thinking mm-hmm. skills that we were looking for. Sure. So because then we, I can imagine that this engineering design process is embedded absolutely. in the content through the grade level. So it's actually even deeper than just putting it in a specials rotation. Absolutely. I, yes. Mm-hmm. And so, and so it can be embedded in every single subject, um, in um, PLCs and planning, it can be embedded in lesson plans, whether you are a um, RELA teacher, um, predominantly most of the time, or you're self-contained, or you teach math and science, it doesn't necessarily matter because mm-hmm. you can use the engineering design process format in order to um, really get that depth of knowledge and improve that critical thinking skills. No, that's wonderful. Well, let's talk about, I mean, all of this is great, Rodri, mm-hmm. you know, um, uh, the depth, you know, depth of knowledge, critical thinking however how did you line that up with the teaks i mean what the students need to be learning right yes absolutely and so it you know like anything it starts very surface level so we got our committee together and we knew that um and we kind of met as a subcommittee before too because we um wanted to be sure that we had curriculum experts in the room and we didn't want to um bog down um our, you know, everyone was a volunteer that, mm-hmm. that, that came and we didn't want to bog them down with um, things that maybe they didn't quite understand or maybe were not really, it wasn't their wheelhouse. Sure. And so what we did was, is we started with science because of course you think STEM, you think science. And we realized that the teaks for science were changing in 24, 25. And we realized that phenomenon is a terminology that comes up in teaks time after time and that our children do not understand how to put things in real world real life practices that's where it started Mm -hmm. then we looked at our science data and we looked at fifth grade because fifth grade is the first year tested for science and we really honed in on what skills do they need to process standards are we missing and so once we identified those we then put it into a um looked at some vertical alignment diagrams and we really broke it all the way down to kindergarten so then we had a um we created this menu of opportunity per like what the teaks were so when we came back to the committee we said listen these are our three top areas that we struggle with so is it like a module base that you're implementing units of study those types of things um, so we do create um, individual um, engineering design process lessons for grade levels so each grade level has four lessons mm-hmm. that um, that is created that is teacher created locally created oh, I love and so that. we are um, developing our own curriculum as well And so teachers meet prior to for half a day um, to help develop what those lessons are going to be. And then once the full week of EDP um, uh, lesson is is completed, then we also meet again to reflect, refine, and put in uh, practice for the following year. Oh, I love that. Okay, that's really awesome. So then let's talk about star preparation i mean that's one of those things the superintendent always tells us you know it's not something we like to talk about but it is our reality absolutely so all of these you know deep dive thinking your processes that sounds like an amazing experience for students 
but how do we bring it back around or what are some things and strategies you, you use to bring it back around the star for Absolutely. May, right? Yes, so we started with, like I said, we started with science and then we really looked at how we could integrate. True. And so then we started looking at um, math process standards, looking at deficit areas, scaffolding it back down, of course, three, four, five, those are star test areas, we can easily look at those. But we really met with, we scaffolded it down and then we met with grade level teams to decide what we need to focus on. We even crossed it over into RELA. We started looking at our scope and sequence, which is something that I think that any any instructional leader really needs to be right. aware of and really can hone in on how can we get the biggest bang for our buck. And what we found was, is if you look in scope and sequence and like now we use Amplify mm -hmm. and we have, you know, the knowledge and skills piece in the lower grade levels and mm -hmm. we have just the um, the knowledge piece There's in the There's a lot three, of four, schema five. building. There mm -hmm. is, yes. yes. And so we found that in our teachers um, began and doing this on their own, we just kept encouraging it. And so our fifth grade teachers would start to where they would look at what um, EDP lesson was coming up and they would um, create uh, writing assignments to get the kids writing, um, specifically targeting um, what the next um, topic was. Soil erosion is one of, the, one of the first ones we did. And it was really neat because it gave them some background knowledge. Sure. Yeah, that sounds amazing. Really you know cool. what this really brings to mind though, Chris, it sounds to me, I mean, we're here talking about a program and how it's changing the students' lives and impacting them. But you know, Roger, really, it sounds to me like the teachers are evolving as well. Absolutely. So how 100%. has that impact their teaching their teaching skill set and strategy. So we've already had seven teachers get nationally STEM certified. So they're nationally STEM certified teachers. Oh, that's amazing. Uh, we have seven more that will um, that will complete the certification process by December. That's and awesome. it really helps them relook at um, what their practices are in the classroom, how they integrate subjects, and then also how they really um, can can uh, comfortably do um, small group um, small group talks, get them peer talking, peer chats. Mm -hmm. um, they use a model um, that has um, A, B, C, and D in the center of the table. And so, for instance, in the STEM lab, you know, you may ask for a group, uh, you know, for students A and B to talk or um, groups, you know, C and A to talk. And it's really a controlled environment. And so mm -hmm. I think that their turn and talks have just incredibly improved as well. You know, I've, I've been fortunate enough to witness this when oh, I've gone wow. to record this uh -huh. for, we did principal for a day at his campus. And we also did where uh, some of the board members and some of the instructional leaders in the district went. Oh, what was that like? It was really cool because, uh, you know, when I was an instructional leader, I would always talk to teachers about randomizing and making kids have these forced academic conversations. Mm -hmm. Yes. And the graphic organizer that they use at King's Manor is so cool because it does that in a really cool way. They can be like, the teacher can be like, hey, A's, I want you to all go to this corner and talk about this for 90 seconds. Okay, and then like the B's are in this corner, mm -hmm. the C's. Are, and it, it really allows for all the kids to talk about what they're supposed to talk to, to different people and build comfort and collaboration in the whole classroom. And it's and really I look cool. At this, I look at the social skills aspect. So this um, this past year, we um, did it with kindergarten and fifth grade. This next year, we're way ahead of schedule. So it's gonna be for all kids, kindergarten through fifth grade. Oh, um, awesome. So we're super excited about that. Um, but specifically, and and I have, a, I have a personal child in kindergarten as well. And when we first um, started uh, with this model, which of course we'd seen some other campuses do it, mm -hmm. but you know, it's different when you're watching it versus, okay, now we're gonna go ahead and put it in practice, right. um, I kept thinking, how are they going to get a five-year-old to have open conversation on a group project? They're going to collaboratively mm -hmm. decide together on what their design is, what their budget is, what their implementation is, and how they're going to test it. And then at the end, how are they going to decide when there's one project and two students? for five years old. And it was absolutely incredible to see what a five-year-old can do. So again, I come back to, um, yes, of course, our five-year-olds are incredible. However, I'm just sitting here imagining the transformation that teachers are going through with absolutely. their own practices. Yes, absolutely. And so they're really reflecting, it's forcing them. I mean, when absolutely. you're uh, forcing them to rethink how they're presenting material, how the students are receiving the material. Um, so it sounds like a lot of collaboration. And, um, and you know, I think too, when teachers get to see it in action, it's one thing for us to sit here and tell teachers, right. but when they are witnessing it with their own eyes, I will tell you what, it has fueled teachers, it fuels educators. And 
I take, it has it has been transformational. That's amazing. So you talked a little bit about your you have your teachers that are being nas- these STEM certified. Correct. Um, if I'm not mistaken, your campus is a campus STEM, right? Yes. So, so we, talk to us a little bit about that process. Yes. So in July, uh, we received the national STEM certification through the National Institute of STEM Excellence, uh, which means that we went through 27 um, modules as a campus to make sure that we meet the indicator criteria to wow. be nationally STEM certified. That's awesome. And so we um, we maintain a certain percentage of our staff members who are nationally STEM certified, and then we strive to um, encourage our other teachers to also get that national STEM educator certification as well. Sure, of course. That's amazing, Mr. Carlisle. Um, so let's just go, let's bring this back around to, let's just say that I'm at a campus and I'm new to the campus and, and I'm not a STEM campus. However, um, we see our, that there's benefits for all students for this type of thinking, right? Mm-hmm. Do you have any suggestions or advice for a new leader or even a teacher? a new teacher of how they can implement just a few of these strategies to help our students, you know, stretch our students thinking. So first off, everyone open invitation to come visit Kings Manor STEM. We would welcome anyone that wants to come first off. Oh, just having this conversation. (laughs) I can't wait to come see your campus. Absolutely. Um, But I would really um, hone in and look at the engineering design process model. And I would look to see if is that something that I might could cross curricular, it doesn't necessarily matter the subject, but is it something that I could take those fundamental principles of the engineering design process and could I make it applicable to my subject, whether it's whether it's reading English language arts. Well, math, and they could do what studies. you did. You started in science. Absolutely. So then just start small, right? That's right. Fifth and grade so, science and, and see where it goes from there, right? Yes. And so in really like like let your teachers, let your new, if you're a new principal or a new assistant, let your teachers start talking. Um, uh, mention it to them. There's a lot of power in numbers, and our teachers are some extremely bright individuals. Yes. So get the conversation going and then listen. And then there's always that pioneer out there who's Absolutely. willing to try everything, right? Yes. right. And so yes. you just bring it up and make it, you know, mm-hmm. you're interested in this, Absolutely. and somebody's going to come yeah. forward with that. Absolutely. No, that's amazing. So, Mr. Carlisle, it has been a great pleasure for you to be here with us today. I'm I'm so grateful. This has been, I mean, we're friends and I thought I knew all this stuff and you've really taught me a lot today. Well, thank you. I'm telling you, I am very passionate about STEM education. Yes. I was, I, I'm very excited to share it with you guys today. Yes, thank yeah. you so much. We're so glad you came to highlight your campus. It, we're so proud of Kings Manor as a district. Absolutely. And it's so cool to see the kids do this engineering design process. Well, and you know, Chris, what I'm loving is this, you, this has only been a year Right. And already the transformation in students and teachers, it has really had a ripple effect, Rodri. Absolutely. Um, you started off with fifth grade science thinking you're going to implement this engineering design process. You got a few committees together, it sounds like. Yes. And, and you stirred the passion in them. And so it just took off. I so tell thank you, what, you for they, your service. Thank you so much. Yes, this yes. is great. All right, well, when we come back, we're going to look at some exit tickets, and we'd love to have you stay and help us answer them. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Awesome. All right, we are back from a short break, and it's one of our favorite times of this podcast. Yes, it is. Where we start to address some questions from our aspiring administrators in this district. So today our question is, how do you choose student ambassadors for a campus student committee? And you know what? We would really like your opinion on this first, Mr. Carlisle. Oh, that's a good one. Okay, so, you know, with STEM, our, our ultimate goal is to get our students doing more and our teachers um, having to do more facilitation and less of the actual uh, heavy lifting, let's right. say, right? And so when we talk about student ambassadors, they're pretty easy to identify at Kings Manor Elementary. And so, um, you know, when you get to see students taking charge of their learning, mm-hmm. those are typically uh, great candidates. Uh, I believe that you even got to witness one when you came over and, and worked with us in STEM with a fifth grade student who, uh, Absolutely, who got did. to definitely... Uh, you know, you got to see his leadership skills for sure. For sure. He was a very respectable young man. Yes. And f- great. I would love to see that kid in show business one day. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, I would even think that you could go to specials classes, you know, things that are like their passion, absolutely. like choir. Right. Um, you probably have choir, student council, or yes. some kind of honor society. Um, but those students, you could just go and observe, right? Absolutely. And even in the classroom during a lesson, during the design process, yes. you could 
Maya, you could just go and observe the students and see how they interact with their peers, see how they respond to the lesson. Mm -hmm. And usually that shines the light on some leadership skills. Absolutely. Yes. Sure and does. then pick those uh, students to lead your campus. Yes. Yes. I yes. love that. That's a great question, Maya. Yes. 100%. 100%. All right. Well, you know, we can't end this without getting your amazing quote of the day to help us kind of wrap up this episode. So do you have a quote for us? I do. So uh, my favorite quote is, um, children must be taught how to think and not what to think. And that's by Margaret Mead. It's a good one. That is a very good one Super that fits powerful. right yeah. with school in general, but STEM thinking as well in this Absolutely. engineering design process. Right. Mr. Carlisle, I can tell you again what a great pleasure it was to meet with you today. And I'm so grateful that you came to help us uh, with our Aspiring Leader Academy. And it, it was a great privilege to talk to you. Yes, thank you for having me today. And I hope that people that listen and watch this podcast get a chance to come and see the EDP process live because it's it's really cool to see what a kindergartner, what a fifth grader can do. Oh, Absolutely. please go and and see what Kings Manor has to offer. And I know, Roger, you're going to want to showcase your campus. Absolutely. I know you love those koalas. Yes. And so, um, and I'm going to come over myself. I can't wait to see that in action well, this year. Well, we can't wait to see y'all. Yes. All right. Yes. Well, that's all we've got for you today on this episode of Evolving Educators.